Hello dear friends, welcome to my channel. Today's discussion is Feynman path integral formulations. So friends, Feynman path integration formulation, formulations, I hope that you, st or, or also, or you study my first and second volumes, okay, and you also watched my videos and you study, okay, the topic, then you know that I have discussed this, this formula, xf, pf, n tends to infinity t epsilon tends to t i integration product e to the power i h bar integration t i into t f t f l x comma x dot comma t okay so i hope friends you know this formula okay this is my Feynman path integral formula and now okay so boundary conditions for the path is this is the this is the two boundary condition of the path Okay, this is two boundary conditions for the path. Okay, so this is our boundary conditions for the for the allowed path, but doing that integration among over the intermediate points is x1, x2, and xn. So this is my equations. Okay, so you see x1, x2, xn. Okay. So actually doing that integrations is allowing you to consider other paths because they are not fixed to any x1 till the x2 till the fixed values but they are integrated over. The set of all these integrals together is actually integrations over a path over a path connecting these two points. So this inf infinite number of in a large n limit he here in their infinite number of integrations infinite number of integrations actually is equivalent to a single integration on the curly f space okay so it is the curly f space you already know you have already known it in my first video i have discussed that analytical path this is the curly f f okay this is the infinite dimensions okay and this is the analytical path okay So this is the curly F space. 
each point's different path corresponding to different points so the infinite number of integers appearing here okay infinite number of integers appearing here so which kind of integral this is this is infinite integral appearing here is actually a you know in sense in a suggestive manner is a single integral on the space of curl f that is called a path integral so we write it this curly d of x and e to the power i by h bar and sub x okay so we can write this way that x f integrations okay this is the integration curly curly d so okay x i h bar a6 so this is Feynman path integral okay this is Feynman path integral because you are doing the path integral of course you will either although the for each segment you are taking here classical path connecting the consecutive points but the entire path is not a classical path okay classical path connecting the consecutive points but the entire path is not a classical path that taking classical path between the okay classical path Path between the consecutive points is just approximations method now but that since the segment width of the segment is going to go to zero in this epsilon goes to zero zero limit large epsilon constant means epsilon goes to zero epsilon tends to zero Okay, this epsilon, this epsilon tends to, epsilon tends to zero. So, this can be, epsilon goes to zero. Okay, entire path are not classical only, the segment, each segment you are taking a classical path, connecting them and that's, just an approximation procedure. So, this is called Feynman path integral. Okay. Epsilon when epsilon tends to 0. So, entire path are not classic, classical. Classical. Only the segment, each segment, you are taking a classical path, connecting them. And that's just approximation procedure. So, this is called Feynman path integral. This can be interpreted by integral complications of doing an integration in a three dimensional space. Okay, so this equation is called Feynman path integral. So this can be interpreted by inti integral complications of doing an integration in a three dimensional space.
okay complications of doing and integrations integrations in a three dimensional space the problem is to make sense of these entire things there are n minus one number of integrations okay n minus one number of integrations integrations integration and then there is a factor okay there is a factor factor a to the power n okay this is the n a to the power n n all together you are calling at dx all together they are all together a say a a d x okay so it includes this is a measures this includes everything here okay so op operationally the way you would do is that when the dynamical system is fixed by action on the Lagrangian then you take a finite value of n capital N and do this calculation and then you take another value which is larger than the previous value do the calculation again so you do the calculation for different values of capital N and keep increasing the value of capital N see if the result is approaching a particular limit okay a result is approaching a particular limit it is that limiting result that is that is right answer for this uh, one this is what it means and a of course a is a arbitrary number okay so this a is arbitrary number a actually defines what the measures is a party partially at least so to find a you demand equality with the results coming from the usual Schrodinger theory Schrodinger theory so in case where you can do the calculation using the usual Schrodinger theory okay I write this so danger theory so that means in in a case where you can do the calculation in both both language a can be fixed by matching result obtained by result so danger theory gives an alternative interpretations conceptual pictures of the quantum mechanics which is a observed in usual so danger theory now you are saying that the particle is moving from here to here and all parts of path are actually contributing to the amplitude only one of them is classical path but there are many infinitely many other paths and that they are all coming from the from the action okay from the action they are all relevant and each one of them are contributing in quantum mechanical amplitude quantum mechanical amplitude what else do i need to mention here so going back to things 
going back earlier we said that in the classical mechanics only the extremum all the we said that in classical mechanics only the extremum all the minima minima of the action are important the entire form of the action is not that is not true because the this is the is the in that entire form of the action is what is responsible for the statement that it generates ca canonical transformations from one time to another and in quantum mechanics quantum mechanics the dependence of manifest because all or dependence on the detail from the action is more manifest because all the non-trivial other paths which are characteristic of the form of the action not only its extremal value not only not extremal lie what about all the other parts action known about all the other parts and those parts are contributing to the amplitude okay so so friends I hope that you can understand little bit okay and path integral I have already told what is path integral and now I want to discuss stationary phase space approximation okay phase space approximations okay I I also discuss whatever he proposed he proposed to recover Feynman proposed to recover all of quantum mechanics from the following postulates okay recalling that the probability for an event is given by the squared modulus of a complex number called probability amplitude okay number one is postulate hope you can get a lot of any google source or any book that what is the postulates mm -hmm. there are three postulates okay Feynman postulates recall these three, three postulates we need to recall number one that probability okay. number two probability amplitude is given by adding together the contributions of all paths configuration space okay number two and number three Number three, the contribution of path is proportional I is H bar. Okay. And S is the action given, uh, given by the time integral uh, of the Lagrangian along the path. So friends, just recall, this is the, I have already discussed everything, but you should re remember this topic. Now, this, this postulate you, you have to remember now i want to discuss stationary phase approximation so if the variation in action exceeds h bar h bar okay if the variations exceeds h bar by many orders of magnitude we typically have destructive interference appearance other than the vicinity of those trajectories satisfying the Euler Lagrange equation, which is now reinterpreted as the condition for constructive interference. Okay. Constructive interference this can be shown using the method of stationary phase applied to the propagator as h bar decreases the exponential in the integral oscillates rapidly in the complex domain 
any ch any change in the action thus in the limit h bar goes to to zero okay on the points where the classical action does not vary contribute to the to the propagator so only points where the classical the classical action does not does not contribute to the propagator so this is the phase space approximation so friends hope you can understand and thanks for watching you have to understand that what is the meaning of the okay another factor is that the stationary phase method means saddle point method gives a way approximate the path integral by using the fact that it is a gaussian integral the final approximation involves fractional functional determinant okay another factor is that the stationary phase phase argument okay stationary phase argument in quantum path integral is a method of approximating integral when the integrate is rapidly oscillating function so friends i just keep i keep this touch i will discuss more okay so you have to remember what is the stationary phase argument stationary phase argument so what is stationary phase argument stationary phase argument in quantum path integrals is a method for approximating integrals when the integrate is a rapidly oscillating functions thanks for watching i will discuss more in my next video